Hello everyone. Reese was reminding me that I haven't done a wash and line in a while. That is line on top of wash, wash first. And it's a great technique when you're interested in drawing, you just feel like drawing. So we're going to keep it springy today in keeping with the season and we're going to do some drawing on top of watercolor. A drawscape. Good one Reese, I like that. Well, hello, minders. Welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor. Well, we're going to revisit a technique uh, which uh, was very popular last time I did a video on it and continues to be a favorite of mine. And I've just been kind of itching to do it again. And that is ink line over wash, or really any line over wash. And that's kind of going to be my theme. Uh, this is such a versatile technique that there's all sorts of ways you can do it. But the unique part is that you do the ink line last. Now I'll be doing it as a spontaneous painting. You don't have to do it. You can actually do it from reference. And if you're not very familiar with painting landscapes, I even recommend that. And the versatility uh, is just really any sort of line. It can be pencil, it can be colored pencil, it can be ink. This right here was uh, sort of a sepia walnut ink, I think. Standard black ink here overwash and I just I really really enjoy doing these but this right here was a plein air piece I've got a video on that but the ink line here was added last it was mostly painted and then finished off with uh, pigma micron another video that I did this was for patrons this was acrylic ink in a dip pen so as I say very very versatile process is putting down paint first and the simpler, the better. So my chosen weapon for today is the Peter Pen. Many of you are aware of or know the Peter Draws channel, and I bought his pen. Actually, I bought a couple. I think he's got like a third or maybe even a fourth out now. But I adore this pen. It is just really well made. Made by uh, the Narwhal Company. And this time I have this loaded with uh, Noodler's Lexington Gray. So it's going to have sort of a, almost a pencil gray look to it. And I just, <laughs> I didn't have any ink line on this one. I'm just itching to do this because I think this is going to be really fun. Let's get started doing another one of these and I'll try to give you my thoughts as we go along. I have a section taped off here. So let's get in a, a little closer. I'm going to be using Imgram watercolor, but I'm probably also going to continue trying to use up this uh, Daniel Smith gouache <laughs> for my review. So what do we want to do? We want to continue with some spring green, thinking maybe. And in typical spontaneous fashion, I'm just going to start painting some random shapes. Maybe not totally random. Okay. I, I really uh, like doing these geometric. This is a Trakel half inch uh, wash brush, protege. Got a little bit of spring green gouache mixed actually with some phthalo green and azo green M gram. I'll pull some bluer green over here. Let me get some Payne's gray involved. I have no plan here. It's totally spontaneous. Let's see what happens with just a little bit of spray. Maybe in the lower portion. If you're watching this video right after I've published it, in about a week my Strathmore workshop on spontaneous painting will be premiering. And they'll do a different video each week. It's free to sign up for. And it's probably the most extensive, well not probably, I'm pretty sure it is, the most extensive video uh, workshop I've done on spontaneous painting. This covers the basics and a couple different ways you can start. Check that out. I like the geometric abstract of that. And again, with this technique, you turn it into something with your ink, your drawing. This is just a great technique if you're just really, really in a drawing mood. You get something dark in here. Usually don't know where the dark will come in exactly handy, but I always know that I need it. 
I repeat myself a lot on this channel, but um, because new people subscribe and, and watch all the time, and so to a lot of people, this info is new, but the, the biggest problem I see with a lot of watercolors is just flat values or a very, very narrow value range. There's just not enough dynamics from dark to light. In the in-person classes I taught, that was one of the number one problems, secondly being water control. And I've done this whole thing with this uh, chisel wash flat. And it's starting to look a little bit overworked, so I probably need to stop. I just want to, I think that's going to be a tree, so I'm going to go on ahead and, of course, making that a tree. But I'm adding, I, I'm always happier when I do less than when I do more. So I better stop. We're going to let that dry, and then we're going to come in with an ink pen. All right, this is dry now, so we're going to start drawing. And as I mentioned before, this is Lexington Gray ink. And I'm gonna use these light areas here to just be able to showcase some tree trunks and tree limbs. And as I usually do with spontaneous painting, I just take the first step and I see what happens. And then I respond. And I wanna create a center of interest right here. Maybe a multi-trunk tree, I don't know, we'll see. Just gonna kinda of sketch it in to begin with. Have it tucked down into that little area of contrast. And this ink is gray, but it will get darker if you just kind of layer it. You can define some little leafy edges too, but I don't want to get carried away with that. I don't know what it is about this this process and technique. It's just such a simple, maybe that's what it is, simple, simple but joyous process. It'll be as if they dip themselves in magic waters. Uh, I like to see delightful little things happen. And, you know, just in this technique, just remember that it is a line and wash. So some things can be line. You don't have to have everything painted in. And every line does not have to surround or outline something. Be kind of loose with it, you know. When it comes to these edges, like I want to make this look like some underbrush. So I like to use a little kind of a scribbly technique rather than go through and just kind of outline that and also don't forget you can come back and make another pass with watercolor maybe some grassy things find it easier if, if you're really wanting to loosen up i personally find it easier to be loose this way than by drawing with ink first. But you can actually be quite tight doing this technique, so. Sometimes these shapes just grow. I mean, you know, you do a little bit, and that's why I think it's important to do a little bit and assess and then come back 
and figure out, well, where do I need to break up an outline? It's looking too much like an outline. Where do I need to add definition? And then uh, they just grow. A lot of these shapes uh, just grow out of each next thing that I do. But it's a very satisfying process, at least to me. And I know for some of you, because you've told me that it's daunting, and you just need to practice these these tree and underbrush kind of shapes from life. Just get better at seeing them, sketching them from real reference. And that helps you see them better when you do something like this. Just one of my favorite ways to draw. When I have uh, an urge to just get out a pen and draw a landscape, it's one of my favorite ways to do it. Is you're laying yourself a base. And I really kind of laid a base that was a little too... Um, complex. I, I should have made it simpler. It, that happens all the time. As I make things more complex than I was intending. You know, you just go through the process. Maybe I will use a little more gouache. So I can kind of break up these edges better that way. It can also help you just kind of dovetail some of these color shapes with the ink work. Following the edges and enhancing contrast, some little shapes that didn't exist before, but now you see them. And so, you know, you make something out of them. The back and forth process. Over here, I think I need some darker watercolor. Could fiddle with it and fiddle with it and fiddle with it but I'm not sure it would gain anything by doing so. Let's take a look without the tape. Hope you enjoyed that. The patrons I did another one which I will edit and put up on Patreon in the near future. So if you're an extra content member uh, you will be able to see this. These are just really fun and I hope you'll give it a try. And here is another one you can watch which uses a similar technique. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.